We're living in a really freaky time. The internet seems often as if it's trying to figure out how to attack us, how to figure out how to manipulate us to do things that we don't really necessarily want to do. For example, to uh, take out a magazine subscription unless we explicitly opt out. Or perhaps we might come across options like these and assume that those are radio buttons that you can choose one of, and yet they are, in fact, checkboxes. Sneaky little tricks. Advances in neuroscience have been teaching us new ways to hack the human brain and how to use that to sell people stuff. And some of it is kind of harmless. Some of it is not. Some of it is rather dark. We call those dark patterns, those ways of trying to make people do things that are negative or that are acting in bad faith towards them. And it's my fear that we're going to see a lot more of these dark patterns in the near future. Artificial intelligence can generate all kinds of very plausible data, things that look real and yet are not. This lady's face looks entirely believable, but she doesn't exist. She's never existed. We can use these kinds of technologies, of course, and things like Snapchat filters to change the way people look. But this can be very manipulative, because we can change our gender or our age or even our ethnicity and use that to fool people in horrible ways. An emerging technology is now enabling us to do this even live, so a live transcription of one person into another person. All technologies can be used for good or for bad, but they open up scary new possibilities. Now, manipulation of data, such as images, is nothing new. This cosmonaut, a man called Grigory Nelyubov, was erased from history for reasons that we're not even quite sure. But it took a very skilled artist to get rid of Grigory. But today, we don't need to be artists. We don't need those kinds of resources at our disposal to change history. Artificial intelligence can erase something that we decide we don't want to exist anymore and change history forever, instantly, for free. Machines are beginning to manipulate us in all kinds of freaky ways. And when we add in artificial intelligence, it means that we can use the power of machine intelligence, that power that solves problems, to solve for obfuscation, to figure out how to make something able to be hidden in plain sight from human eyes. This is changing our society. It's never fun to be banned or to be excluded. But traditionally, we at least know that we've been excluded. And new technologies are changing, whether we may be aware of this or not. For example, perhaps instead of excluding somebody, you can simply de-boost them. And it means that you may be putting stuff out there online, but other people aren't seeing it. They are being shifted towards something else. In essence, freedom of speech remains, but freedom of reach does not. And freedom of reach is what counts in this case. There are other ways that we can reshape human perceptions. If there's a social group of roughly 50-50 different opinions, we can change how those people connect with each other to segment off one portion of it with a little bit of 
the other opinion within it. And over time, because those people that have been excluded are exposed to the majority opinion of the group that they've been sectioned into, they will inevitably begin to flip their opinion over time. You might decide to go down to a protest meeting, to meet up with a friend, and you get that all-important message, that little double check mark that tells you this message has been read. And yet on their phone, they never got it. This is a particularly insidious form of censorship called on-device content moderation. And I invite you to be a digital tourist, to change the country settings on your phone and have a look at how your phone behaves when it's set to a different country. What things can you access or not access? What things have been disappeared? It's very telling. Today, on sites like Reddit, they have an entire subreddit, which is nothing but bots. These bots have been trained on existing Reddit posts, and they recreate them very, very sophisticatedly. And they're talking to each other, and there's no humans in the mix. But what if there were? What if somebody was streamed into something that they thought was a regular forum, but in fact was entirely posting by bots? And so all of their interactions would not be with other human beings that they thought had similar views. They would instead be talking to nobody in particular, nobody important anyway. In essence, this is a little bit like putting someone in a virtual ghetto with glass walls. And you may think that this is a little bit far-fetched, and yet those big tech companies, today, they have patents on these kinds of technologies. It gives us a glimpse of what may be coming around our corner if we're not careful. The glass box works in a different way. Because often we think that we're having a private conversation, or that something is between two people, like two close friends. And yet, Somebody can drive by on the internet and overhear something and then expose a private thought or a funny comment to the whole world. And the next thing you know, that relatively harmless thing that you said has mobs of people outraged coming after you, trying to destroy your career. And OK, maybe we must learn to be a little bit more quiet, a little bit more discreet online. But the World Wide Web has been around for over 25 years. And there's a lot of stuff out there that many of us have put out onto this network. There's something called opinion necromancy, right? Somebody who raises the dead, who goes through this trove of data looking for things to pin on someone, which I feel is very unfair, especially because what is normal, what is appropriate, has changed so much in quite a short period of time. Now, a lot of those comments made 10 or 15 years ago might have been made on forums where you had a handle, and nobody could really know who you were. But that's changing. New AI technologies are doing very sophisticated analysis of linguistics. They're looking for those signatures that pinpoint us. For example, the author, J.K. Rowling, wrote a book under a different name because she wanted to go into a different genre. And she was busted, right? It's all too easy to figure out who is writing what, even with that pseudo-anonymity. And it means that these big tech companies can track us, even when we think we're not trackable. 
And they're using this tracking ability to generate a kind of a voodoo doll, a virtual version of you that they can simulate. And so that they know what you're going to do even before you do. And what you can pre preempt, or what you can predict, you can preempt, right? If you can predict what somebody's going to do, you can nudge them in a certain direction or other, or get them to do something that they otherwise would not. These technologies are becoming very manipulative. If I ask you your opinion on something, whether you like a certain football team or a certain fragrance or a certain meal, you will give me an answer. But if I come back to you a week later and say, oh yes, I remember you told me you liked such and such, something different, not what you actually said, you won't correct me. You will, in fact, be most likely to update your preference to the thing that I told you. It's a very freaky illusion called false feedback, or sometimes also called change blindness. This is, in essence, an unpatchable exploit within the computer of the human mind. We can't really fix it, but it's easily exploited. It can be used to change our impressions of the world, to shift our preferences, to manufacture consent, or to change people's opinions en masse. And some of you, some of you might remember that something wasn't quite right. No, I'm pretty sure I did say I like spaghetti bolognese instead of lasagna. But the mistake can be explained away. Oh, that was just a bug, a glitch, a goof, our bad. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it in the next release. But how much of that glitch was actually from the system? How much of it might come from human agency? Something all too human, a ghost in the machine which is pulling its strings, changing how it operates or makes a prediction or an impression of you in a way which is perfectly, plausibly deniable. It may feel as if we are being haunted by a cyber poltergeist that is gaslighting us in different ways, abusing our very perceptions of reality. I don't think this is going to be good for mental health. It is written that those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. Timeless words. In our society, what of those with godlike power? How are they likely to dispose of those who displease them? What can we do about this? How do we stop it? How do we protect ourselves and our families? Our minds must not become a battleground. The human mind must remain sovereign and sacrosanct. They say that sunlight is the best disinfectant. And I'm inclined to agree with that. It is a culture of transparency which helps us to understand those murky depths. For the last half a year or so, I've had the extreme privilege of leading a team, creating new rules for transparency and explainability 
for autonomous systems. We want to make it open and clear who's doing what with these systems and how they're being operated and for what purpose. We want to make it easy for anyone to understand in common language. I think we need to come together as a society to hold these big tech companies accountable and tell them that we demand freedom of consciousness for ourselves and our children. Together, with the force of our wills and a good heart filled with good faith, we can build a safe, fair and just algorithmic society. Thank you.